hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. Welcome back. In the last video we talked about dominant and recessive alleles and compared, distinguish between the two. We're going to do in this stop point, score over the next stop point, which is solve problems involving crossing using Punnett squares or appropriate techniques. So we're going to go over two different techniques, Punnett squares and the branch diagram. What we have to do, we have to actually solve problems. So problems that you might get similar to what you might get in your HSC. And before we start, I want to go over the, the important steps when it comes to actually constructing your Punnett squares or the other appropriate technique, which is the branch diagram. First, what we're going to do, we're going to make sure we assign letters to our actual traits. Remember, because it's a monohybrid cross, monohybrid cross means we're looking at two different traits. So we have to have two different letters, or in this case, two different versions of the same letter. So we only have one letter. So when we assign letters, we're only allowed to assign one letter, but we have two traits. So what we do is we assign one, the capital, and the other is the lowercase. So for example, if we're looking at height, so tall and short, we're comparing tall and short, we're only allowed to use one letter. So what we do, tall is dominant over short. We use T for tall. And then we have to use that same letter, just the undercase version. And that small t would then be short. So choose one letter. And then we have to, the second part is, we have to assign the dominant one. It has to be the capital part of that letter. So in this case, the, the dominant one is capital T, stands for tall. Whereas the recessive one, which is short, stands for small undercase, lowercase t. So that's the first part. Step one done. We have to assign letters to our different traits. Only choose one letter and make sure you assign the capital T for the actual dominant one and the lowercase t for the recessive one. Next, we're going to make sure we clearly label our P, F1 and F2 generation. Our P generation was the parent generation. F1 was the first generation. So that was the offspring of the actual parent generation. And the F2 was then the second generation. So that was the offspring of the F1 generation. So when we have our Punnett squares or branch diagrams, we're going to make sure we clearly label those. So I'll give you an example. So for example, again, we're looking at height. So what we can do as well is we can actually make the different members. So for example, this might be the female and this might be the male. What we have to do is write the genotype. So in this case, I've written uppercase and lowercase t, which means, what is that? It's a heterozygous. It's a hybrid. And what would the actual phenotype be? What would the appearance be? It would, she would be tall, and he would be tall as well. Because the dominant one is overshadowing the recessive one, which means both of them are tall. Now, we cross P generation, so these are having babies, and then we can use them called Punnett square. And how that works is we put the allele, so we put the T one of the alleles because we have to segregate them, we have to split them apart. So one goes into this part of the Punnett square and the other one goes in this part. So T capital, that's for the tall and lowercase for short, that's for the female. And then we cross them with the male and again we have to, seg we have to separate them, segregate them. So one of the T's goes here and the other T goes here. Again, one capital T and one lowercase T. Now what we do is we look at all different combinations. So for example, if we if the child gets capital T from the mom and the capital T from the dad, it's homozygous, which means that it has all the same ones, homozygous tall. Whereas if it gets the capital one from the mom and a small one from the dad, then it's heterozygous, but still tall because it has a T dominating. Whereas if it gets the capital from the dad, this one here, and the dominant one, uh, sorry, the small one, lowercase, from the mom, it's still heterozygous tall, so it's still tall. Whereas if we get both the small t and the capital T from parents, what happens now is it's homozygous recessive, which means it's actually short. So next part is state the ratios State F1 ratios, these are the F1s, phenotype and genotype ratios. So what would the phenotype ratio be? Well, we would have 
for every three tall ones, this one's tall, this one's tall, this one's tall, we have one short one. So three to one is the phenotype ratio. And what would the genotype ratio be? Well, we have one TT. So one TT. We have two times two T, capital T and lowercase t. Easier. We have one double lowercase t. So the ratio here would be one homozygous dominant to every for every one homozygous dominant. We have two heterozygous tall and one homozygous recessive short. So it's a one to two to one ratio it's for the genotype. Right? That would be the Punnett square. And the branch diagram is very similar. All you have to do here is we have our actual alleles here. You have to separate them. So you get, say T is here and you separate the small T as well. These are just, this is, might be the wife and this are the alleles from the father capital T here, and then small t here. And then what you do is you just look at all different combinations. So for example, if this t and this t came together, because you only get one t from every parent, then the actual offspring would be t capital and t capital. So that child would be homozygous dominant. Whereas if it gets, sorry, if it gets this one from the mom and this one from the dad, it would be capital T gets it from the mom, whereas there's lowercase t from the dad, it would be heterozygous, whereas if it gets this one from the mom, and this one from the dad, again we still have our heterozygous pole, so it gets a small t from the mom, but a capital T from the dad, and that overshadows, and if it were to get this one from the dad, and this one, wait, if it gets this one from the mom and this one from the dad, that would be two T's. And this would be the homozygous recessive. So ratio-wise, that's ratio is a, for the phenotype, this one's tall, this one's tall, this one's tall, and this one's short. There's a three to one ratio for the phenotype. Three tall for every one short. And for the genotype, we have for every one double T, we have two, one, two, one capital T and one lowercase t, so the heterozygous. And we also have one homozygous recessive. So the ratio is one to two to one for the genotype. And so that's for this kind of thing, you need to be able to use either Punnett square or the branch diagram. And what you need to know is you need to know the steps, you need to know when to assign letters, you need to be able to clearly label the actual parent generation, F1 generation and F2 generation. So for example, you would say this here is the F2 generation, so what we actually drew just now, the F2 generation here. What you need, also need to be able to do is obviously again the assign letters, Make sure you only assign one letter and a capital T, or in this case, capital letter in general is always the dominant one. The lower case is always a recessive one. And make sure to state the actual ratio. So if, especially if the question itself asks you to, state the phenotype and the genotype ratio. And for example, in the examples we had here, both of these were the exactly same examples. We had a phenotype ratio of three tall to one short, which means for every one short there's three tall. Whereas the genotype ratio was for every one homozygous dominant, there was two heterozygous tall and one homozygous recessive short. So it's a one to two to one ratio for the genotype. So hopefully that made sense. Thank you for watching.